Well, good morning, Abundant Life Church family. I know this isn't exactly what you maybe think about church, and it's, we're online, we're not in a building, we're not, we don't get to see each other, but I want to let you know that I'm going to do this to the best of my ability, that we are going to do, if this is what we have for church, then let's do it. Let's do it to the best of our ability, let's gather together. I would invite you now just to go and get your coffee or your hot chocolate or your soda pop or whatever it is that you like to drink, water, I, I don't know, just go get a, a beverage or grab a snack and then get your Bible and journal and, and get your family members together and let's, let's do church online together. Because this, I am so excited to be able to to share with you this morning what God has has put on my heart. This message for you. So, okay, I think you got your beverage, you got your Bible, your journal, you got most of your family members. Let's let's uh, look at this uh, message this morning. But before I do that, let me just pray. God, I thank you for this opportunity where we can gather together. I thank you that we can meet online, and I just pray and believe that this message is going to uh, bring hope, and it's just going to speak to people's hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, before before I get into it, I just, I, I just wanted to let you know that tonight, live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, we are going to be going at 6 p.m. for our Refuel Worship Night, and it's just going to be a night of worship and encouragement and um so please please join us tonight at 6 p.m we'd love to have you when you think of the word contagious it typically has a negative tone to it we think of things like virus sickness uh, disease um, these are kind of some words that are associated with the word contagious but there's another word that's associated with the word contagious, and that is carrier. Carrier. And this morning, I, I want to kind of look at this question, is what are you carrying that is worth catching? Let me repeat that again. What are you carrying that is worth catching? Kind of this idea that that when you're around people and, and you 
get together with people or you talk with people. Um, when people, when you leave the room, do people say, man, I, I like what they have. They're so encouraging. They're so loving. They're so kind. And, and that's what we want to look at this morning is what are we carrying that is worth catching? There's, I came across this quote by, by a lady named Mother Teresa. And she said this, We can cure physical diseases with medicine, but the only cure for loneliness, despair, and hopelessness is love. And this really, I, I really pondered and thought about this thought. And it, and, it, and it brought me back to the question I just asked you. Am I carrying anything that's worth catching? Do I have anything to offer to people that's going to help them, that's going to encourage them, that's going to give them hope? And that's what we really want to look at this morning. We're going to be looking at, at, a, at a Bible story about the Thessalonians. And we're going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians. And, and this was written to them by Paul. And it was written to a church that was very, 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 very afraid. They were very fearful. Just circumstances that were surrounding them. There was people that didn't like the message that they were sharing. And, and Paul wrote them this letter to, to help them to encourage them, to remind them of what they're doing is making a difference. So let me just read it now for you. It's 1 Thessalonians. This letter is from Paul, Silas, and Timothy. So here sometimes Paul would have other people that would help him write the letters, but predominantly this message was from Paul. It is written to the church in Thessalonica, you who belong to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May his grace and peace be yours. We always thank God for all of you and pray for you constantly. As we talk to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your continual anticipation of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that God loves you, dear brothers and sisters and that he chose you to be his own people. For when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, but also with power. For the Holy Spirit gave you full assurance that what we said was true. And you know that the way we lived among you was further proof of the truth of our message. So you received the message with joy from the Holy Spirit in spite of the severe suffering it brought you. In this way, you imitated both us and the Lord. As a result, you yourselves became an example to all the Christians in Greece. And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere, even beyond Greece. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about it, for they themselves keep talking about the wonderful welcome you gave us and how you turned away from idols to serve the true and living God. And they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. See, Paul had a kind of this special bond with the church in Thessalonica because Paul was the one that that started this church. He was the one that that came and told them about Jesus and and then when he left this is when this church uh, was established. So Paul had a lot to do with this church um, being where it was at this point in history. And he starts out the letter by saying grace and peace. And what Paul is trying to say here is, is I am bringing you 
I'm writing to you joy and kindness from God. This He's setting the tone for what this letter is going to be to the Thessalonians. That he's going to bring them joy and kindness. He is going to try to, to encourage them. And what they're doing is good things. And then he goes further to encourage them to say that he is praying for them constantly. Constantly. That basically means he's praying for them a lot. Like all the time. Constantly. And I, and I just want to let you guys know that, that I am praying for you constantly. Every moment and opportunity, I am thinking of, of someone from Abundant Life Church and, and our Abundant Life Church family. And I'm praying for you. And I want you to know that when you submit prayer, prayer needs to me, I take the time to pray because I believe in the power of prayer. And Paul did as well. He was praying for them constantly. And I want to, to just, if you are not doing it, keep praying for people constantly. Just always be praying for people. If somebody pops into your mind, or into your heart, then pray for them. Let's keep that attitude of praying for people constantly. And then Paul mentions three things that this church in Thessalonica is doing well. They have they are doing faithful work, loving deeds, and they have an anticipation of Jesus' return. They are faithfully serving the people where they live. They are showing love to people, the love of Jesus to people. And they are eagerly anticipating that Jesus will one day return. And Paul is admonishing them and saying, kudos to you. Great job, church. You are doing these things so well. And, and even though this was a difficult situation, they were, they were living in fear. They, they had people that did not like them. And it was difficult. But they became the frontline workers. And they were leading the charge. They were out in front doing the work that Jesus had called them to do, despite the circumstances, despite what was going on around them, they faithfully were serving Jesus. And then Paul says to them that they are loved and that they are chosen. Loved and chosen. I think someone needed to hear that today. You are loved by the God who created this world. He loves you so, so much. And then you are chosen. See, he wants us to be a part of fulfilling his mission on earth. He wants you. He wants you to be a part of it. Just like these, the people in, in the, the Thessalonica church, as they were loved and chosen by God for a specific purpose. And so are you. God has great plans for you, but you have to, you have to believe that. That you are loved and chosen by God. Then Paul, in this part of the letter, I'm sure this was probably a ex very exciting moment for him to, to even remember this, this moment in his life that he was the one that had brought them good news. And the good news of, 
of course, is Jesus. And he had came and he had shared with them the good news. Paul had shared with the Thessalonians about Jesus. And I'm sure that Paul, as he's writing this letter, he's probably like, Oh man, I just, I remember when I, when I came and told you the good news. Oh, what a joyful moment that was. Because, friends, there are people that are desperately needing to hear good news. Things in their life, in their family, just circumstances that are surrounding us right now in 2021. People are desperate to hear good news. And the good news that we need to be sharing is Jesus. People need Jesus. And we need to be desperate to share that. But then, Paul lets us know that that when you have now shared the good news, you have you have shared with people about Jesus, then you need to step back. You need to take a couple steps back and allow the Holy Spirit power to enter the scene. Because, friends, as much as you you think that you can be the one to save people, it's not our job. We need to share. Absolutely. We need to be telling people. We need to be setting an example for people. Definitely. But then we have to step back and allow the Holy Spirit to come in. And and that is where people's lives will be changed and transformed. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul Then in the letter, it kind of gives us this glimpse or when you see in a movie or a TV show, a flashback scene to to when they chose to follow Jesus. When Paul first came to them and he shared with them about Jesus and they said, yes, we want to follow Jesus. And this early small group of believers, these Thessalonians that were just new believers had such a passion to train up other believers in Greece. And they began to go and and help other Christians that were in Greece at the time. And this, my friends, is called discipleship. Is where it's this training up. It's this learning how to be like Jesus. What does it look like to be a follower of Jesus, especially in 2021? I have two awesome boys that drive me nuts sometimes, bonkers, but I love them. And and I get to teach them about Jesus. It's a great honor and privilege for me to be able to do that. To be able to to help, to raise them up, train them up to follow Jesus. And, And think about this right now. As we're in a lockdown. And a lockdown forces us home. So maybe what you want, where you want to start is the people in your home. Because this lockdown has forced us into our homes to be with our families. And those are the people that you should start with. And tell them about Jesus. Begin to train them up onto what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. If you don't have a regular uh, family devotional time, I would encourage you to begin that practice. Begin to just open up the Bible and and read it and uh, and teach your kids, teach the people in your household about Jesus. And then Paul says that the good news began to spread. It began to spread outside of Greece. 
And Paul began to meet people on his journey because he, he traveled around a lot of places. And he began to meet people outside of Greece. And they would tell them their story and they would say, I am a believer in Jesus because someone in Thessalonica told me. The good news began to spread. And can we say that? Can, can people say, I am a believer today. I have chosen to follow Jesus because someone at Abundant Life Church told me. When we do this, this good news will spread. And, and I want you to know that I am so excited about this online platform that I've been given. Where I can shout, shout the good news. And this is something to think about. Is online. What are, are you shouting? Are you shouting good news? Or are you shouting negativity are you adding to the negative noise are you spreading hope and encouragement to people really think about that we have been given an online platform and how you are going to use that platform to share good news Paul also began to say how the Thessalonians turned from idols things that were distracting them from from knowing Jesus and just so you know Netflix Justin Bieber and chocolate uh, those things are never going to satisfy you the way that Jesus can and we in these days, we need to focus our attention to Jesus, to developing a relationship with Jesus. And it said then as he comes to the end of the letter that he said the church in Thessalonica was living every day like Jesus was coming back tomorrow. There was an urgency in their message. And there was this desperation and this passion inside them that said, I want to make sure that everybody that I come into contact with, everybody that I know, hears the name Jesus, hears the good news, hears that you need to turn to Jesus and have a relationship with him. There's something on a building called a cornerstone. And I looked this up because I'm not a builder. And so I needed to, to find out what is a cornerstone. And a cornerstone on, on a building marks the geographical location by orienting a building in a specific direction. And when I was 16 years old, Jesus became my cornerstone and he began to lead and guide my life in a specific direction. I had opportunities to be a camp counselor, a youth leader. I went on missions trips. In, in the course of my life, I met my beautiful wife, Amy. We had two great boys. I've I've ministered in different parts of Ontario as a pastor. And that was another thing that, that God called me to be a pastor. And, and through all this, I, it hasn't always been perfect. I have not been perfect, oh, believe me. No, I have not been perfect. But I have always gone in the specific direction that Jesus wanted me to go. He was my cornerstone. 
And there's a chorus of a worship song that is called Cornerstone, and it says this, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord of all. And at this time now, the band is going to come and sing this worship song, Cornerstone.
Well, thanks so much, Ben, for, for leading us in that song. And I, and I pray and hope that you make Jesus the cornerstone in your life. Well, I, I just am so thankful for you taking the time to join with us for Abundant Life Church Online. Remember tonight, 6 p.m. on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, we'll be having a refuel worship night and we'd love for you to join us. But this week, let's tell people about Jesus. Let's have an urgency in our message. Let's love people like Jesus loves people. And let's follow Jesus. Let me just pray for us before we go. Lord God, I just pray for each person that's that's watching this right now. And I pray that if they do not have a relationship with you, Jesus, I pray in this, in this right now and maybe even later that they would call out to you. That they would simply say, Jesus, please come into my life. I surrender my life to you. Please forgive me of the wrong things that I have done. And I submit my life and my heart and my mind to you, Lord Jesus. And that they would take the time to pray that. I pray for us that, that know Jesus and have a relationship, would follow him. That we would love the people around us. That there would be an urgency in our message to tell everyone we know about Jesus. So be with each person. Watch over them. Keep them safe. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us. And I can't wait to see you very, very soon. Bye now.